and welcome. And tonight we are going to make dumplings. We are jiaozi. 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 I'm here with my friend Ning, and we've been having lots of fun chatting in Chinese, um, which drives Neil mad because he doesn't understand it. He's been very good about it. But we are going to make jiaozi. When I was at university learning Chinese, having a jiaozi party was like so much fun. Because it's a really low cost and fun way that university students can get together and they can make the dumplings together and they can just have lots of fun. And I hadn't done one for years, but usually we have pizza Fridays and Ming was coming over and I thought, she's probably had too much pizza, <laughs> let's do something different. So we're going to make this very traditional one. So we have some pork, which you can see here. And I have gone to the Chinese butcher and bought some extra fatty pork mince. You might ask why do that? Because usually we like in Australian culture to have extra lean meat. So why do you have the fatty meat? I think this is getting the juice more juicy, and yep. especially when the um, dumpling is boiled. And once you, you, you get your hands on, you get the nice juicy inside. Exactly, so if the meat is too lean, um, and usually they use out. pork, um, yeah. the dumplings, but not exclusively, it dries out. Now the second thing is cabbage. Um, they wow. use other vegetables as well, but cabbage is the most common. And look at this beauty. It is beautiful. And I know it is particularly nice because there's little buggies on it. Um, we've already <laughs> found a few. So this is a uh, one box. So in Chinese, what do we say? Da bai cai. Da bai cai. So I went to the Chinese grocer today and asked for da bai cai. But da bai cai. And they were a bit surprised because they don't usually get Caucasian um, women asking for da bai cai, but we worked it out in the end. And so you can see all the little buggies and stuff over them. Now, don't freak out if you get that because that means that this has probably been grown without too many pesticides, which is a good thing. Would you agree, Ming? I think so. That would be more than that. Last and look time. at this. Yeah. Look it's how, really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Look how beautiful it is. So... Do you usually wash it before or after you cut them? Personally, I prefer to. <laughs> well, I'll get the most of the uh, leaves out and then cut them or wash them. So yeah. you would yes, we'll cut, them. cut them off at the yeah. butt base. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and so that way we can yeah. separate it out. Yeah. I'll probably need to cut a bit more out, don't I? Mm. Mm. I like this bit. Don't want, like, don't want too much hard root. Yeah. I like the middle bits, I must say. Well, for the cabbage, a lot of people are using the one cabbage um, for different cooking. So they will keep the heart for, you know, like shang tang wa wa cai, make like a cabbage soup. Oh. Um, the leaves making dum dumplings or stir fry. So, that's good. So one cabbage can be multitask. Well, that's good because I've learned many things from yeah. just from that. So this yeah. um, wombok, uh, the da bai cai, I bought yeah. for $6, but you can use it for many meals. Many meals. And this is a season for the cabbage too in the winter time. I was talking to a friend before I come in. We were from the north part of China, which the da bai cai will last. So now we've washed the cabbage and I'm getting Ming to do all the chopping. <laughs> I'm not the best. <laughs> You know, Usually come I'll do a kitchen nightmare. Oh, no, no, but you know, come over for dinner and you'll do the chopping yourself. Um, <laughs> but we were talking before about what cabbage meant to you when you were growing up. Yeah, for me, well, it really depends where you come from. I'm from a humble beginning and especially the childhood. Each year there were winter four seasons, so we have a long winter time. And cabbage is just part of the daily meals. At one point, I was so sick of them because um, wasn't much other stuff available. And recent years, I kind of miss the time. It reminds me childhood actually, <laughs> getting my hands on on the cabbage. Single meal and leftover cabbage and more cabbage. Yeah, it just uh, it just never finish. So basically, um, Ming is cutting it up really finely. She's cutting it into long shreds and then. She's cutting it into tiny bits. And we're mainly using um, the bits um, with the leaves on, the bits from the middle, the nice green bits, um, rather than the heart and other things. 
So these are things that when you put them into the dumplings, they will kind of melt in, won't they? Yep. And so they'll add to that soupiness in each of the dumplings that we have. I was asked for a whole winter, <laughs> um, especially when I was younger, you know, grandparents try to get a fresh veggies, mainly the dal mai thai. I the remember winter. being back in studying in Beijing in 1995. <laughs> I know. That's just scary. scary. <laughs> and um, in autumn, late autumn, they had that season where all the cabbage came in. Yeah. And it was weird. It was like a scene out of, I don't know, like aliens taking over the world or something. All <laughs> the cabbages came in to the capital. Um, so it was fascinating. So we're now going to wash this and then we're going to come back and um, cut it up. Yep. Mix with the meat later. When I was in Taiwan, sometimes they would salt the cabbage and then they'd put a heavy object on it and leave it in a strainer for about half an hour. But in this case, this form bop is so fresh, it's, it's not bitter at all, is it? Yeah, you can just a fresh blend with the meat. Exactly, mm. so this is just so lovely and fresh, there's no reason, there's no need to salt it. But if you're using a cabbage that is a bit strongly flavoured or it's a little bit old, then I'd suggest salting it, like cutting it really finely and leaving it for at least half an hour before you use it. But we don't need to with this. Actually, have you tried a cabbage salad before? Yes. Yes? Oh. Yes, with the peanuts. Oh, yeah. Um, the How do you like salad. it? Well, one other way we did before with vinegar and uh, soy sauce. Just Yum. simple simple and fresh with you can add a little bit of chili if you want to so kind of have a fresh salad with a meal too i really like in japanese food like especially when they have like like our equivalent of schnitzel you know when they have um i forget the term for it but the breaded um um, pork or the chicken which is mm -hmm. deep fried mm -hmm. so done in with the um, Japanese breadcrumbs but katasu katasu thank you so much I, knew you <laughs> I know something and um, they serve it with the shredded um, spinach on the side not the one box spinach yeah what we would know is uh, sorry not with a one box um, cabbage what we would know as mm -hmm. a traditional cabbage and mm -hmm. if they shred it really finely don't they mm -hmm. and when it's fresh it's just so beautiful mm -hmm. Well, I might now get this other bowl and mm. let's start putting it all together. Yep. So this is actually a rice cooker that I'm now using it as a cooking bowl. Waste not, why not? I'm going to use about half of this meat. What do you think? For about four people? I think that will do. So this is one kilogram, so I'm going to use about 500 grams of mm. the pork. Mm. With this nice fatty pork. Do the sauce. <laughs> Have you tried the um, dumpling sauce? Oh yes, with the yeah, um, we can make a garlic sauce uh, with the soy sauce as well. So the dipping well, the sauce. dipping sauce. Yeah, if you like dipping sauce. With some a little bit of chili sometimes mm -hmm. and a little bit of ginger oh, and do. some um, garlic. That's all these things that are really useful. Good. Do you put um, garlic in this as well? Yeah. Put a little bit. Yeah, that would do. Excellent. So we're just so going to cut that up. You just go with, well with the meat. I was really interested back in 1995, showing my age here, when I was <laughs> a student in China and one of only a few international students. Um, there were still, comparatively, compared with today, there weren't that many, but there were still a few of us. Mm. And I was amazed at how oily the food was. And Beijing food, I think, is renowned for being quite oily. Mm, right mm. but you know it's cold that's probably one of the reason why it's you exactly. know food is all about the region where the climate everything is highly related and with the region that produce is part of their daily life but what i was really surprised about was later i started researching um, some of the things that are really good for helping heart disease Mm. And a number of the things that have been in our diet were really prevalent. Like, for instance, they use so many um, um, garlic, so much garlic in Beijing food, and also the garlic shoots. And all of those things are so good for your heart. And same with a lot of the mushrooms they use and so forth. So I think they said uh, it's good for some, sort, some different type of cancer as well, for preventing. And there was an old saying, say, um, which means the garlic 
complements the meat, we, you get the best nutrition out of the meat. If you don't eat garlic, just eat the meat alone, the nutrition would reduce half. Wow. So that was an old saying, and we always encouraged to combine with the <laughs> garlic. It makes sense. Garlic's a mm -hmm. wonderful food. Now, how much soy sauce did you usually put in? One or two tables, at least, and then it's got more than bok. Oh, it's nice with the meat too. Yeah. yeah. So I like fresh ginger, but we happen to have this canned stuff. So I'm going to add a decent uh, teaspoon because I find that the um, stuff in a jar isn't as potent mm. um, as the fresh stuff. Um, like I said, it's it's not as preferred as the fresh stuff, but this is what I've got. And you like to add a little bit of sugar to yours, don't you? A little bit. So a little bit like mm. what, like about... Um, one teaspoon will be about one teaspoon. Yeah. So this is a tablespoon's worth. So I'm mm -hmm. guesstimating that's, that's about good. a teaspoon. That's and the beauty of Chinese cooking. Just you feel it. You can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it. Now we're going to put yeah. some of this in. Is that right? Yeah. So all nicely chopped. You'll course. get the color and the flavor. And then of course there's yeah. going to be in the dipping sauce too. Yeah. So we are going to use that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes in Taiwan they put a bit of oil, and in fact one of my friends likes to put a bit of butter into his pork. Butter? As well. I know. Interesting. I've never heard of it before. Oh, I had never heard of it before as well. It's not a weird Western thing. This is uh, a trend in Taiwan. We call that fusion probably. <laughs> probably. I don't know. But, you know, this is also to create that juice that we're talking about. So we're now going to mix this all in and we yep. can probably cut a little bit more um, cabbage, cabbage. Yep. but this is just to get a feeling for what it's like. Mm. And you might have been concerned about the amount of fat that is in this pork. I know in Australia, like I said, we say that it is really going to be very much balanced by the amount of um, cabbage and or other vegetables that is in this. In this case, it's cabbage. And we really, I don't think we eat enough vegetables in Australia, do we? Oh, no. I'm, I'm behind now. <laughs> <laughs> in Chinese food, there's always so much vegetables. Different types of vegetables. And different types of vegetables. Mm. It's just part of everyday cooking. And just see how this mixture, it just soaks up so much cabbage. And the cabbage will wilt down, so you need lots and lots of cabbage to make this work. If you don't have a lot of cabbage, it's just the meat. It's just not the same, is it? It becomes a bit hard. Mm. It needs it needs the cabbage or other vegetables to bind it. Mm. Well, actually, you can add more stuff in, into the uh, meat. You know, like um, you can even add a prawn meat. Ooh. Um, Combined with the pork, also the funky ears. Oh yes, the yeah, um, it go well together yes. too. The um the black wood ear mm. fungus. Yeah, I love fungus. the black wood ear fungus. I don't know that I've totally sold Neil on it, but he's very good about understanding it. Well, if you blend them together, it it doesn't taste much, so he probably can buy that. <laughs> <laughs> buy into the idea we have eating the. Well, jiaozi usually is a family thing and a gathering thing. One person probably don't bother too much, you know, to to do the whole lot. <laughs> so a lot of times in family gathering, we, we make dumplings and chatting together. And it's a part of the culture as well. Um, in the old days, when there are holidays, family gatherings and uh, different occasions, we usually finish off the day dinner with dumplings. Yum. Mm. And it's a Chinese New Year's Eve thing too, isn't it? Sitting around. Because yeah. you stay up so late waiting for the Chinese New Year to, to roll in. Yeah. It's a fun thing to do. So I think that's about right for the cabbage. So that's just under half of a good sized wombok. Uh, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of crushed ginger, about one teaspoon of sugar. Probably could add a little bit of salt if you like, but there's going to be a very salty dipping sauce that's going to go with this.
Good. Well, now we're going to prepare the um, jowls of pea, the um, dumpling skins. So now that we've got the mixture, the pork mixture for our jowls, we are now going to make them. So this is called in Chinese, you say bao jowls, right? You can probably say it much better than me, funnily enough. <laughs> So what I've done is I've bought some gaoji wrappers from um, the Chinese grocery store at the same time when I was buying my da bai cai. Da bai cai. Um, and these are quite nice because they're nice uniform um, kind of consistency. And so we're going to do a demonstration here. <laughs> going to get the expert to bake them. I haven't done this for ages. <laughs> so let's see how it turns out. So basically you use one spoon yeah. of the stuff. And then you want to leave a little bit gap on the top and the bottom because they will hold well. So I would usually just hold in the ears and get that tight. Yeah, mine aren't as neat. So that is why I have the expert. Now, what is interesting is the shape, which is in ancient times in China, their gold bullion was shaped in a round sort of shape, a bit like a hat, wasn't it? And that was their money, really, the way of storing exchange. And so these dumplings are shaped to look like those gold... Actually, you're right. I haven't oh, heard much of all these. <laughs> of course I'm right. <laughs> no more than... Spent years studying Chinese. So sometimes, um, you know, so we think when you learn a, a different culture, you often learn things that people in that culture have never thought about. <laughs> <laughs> And this is why, and this is one of the reasons why it's considered so lucky to eat dumplings at special events such as Chinese New Year. Because at Chinese New Year, you always think really prosperous thoughts about the year ahead and wanting to bring in lots of abundance, lots of plenty, lots of money. And so you eat lots of special foods that are really auspicious. And dumplings are especially auspicious because they look like money. And also the cabbage um, means fortune exactly so the tie sounds tai, like ba tai, ba tai, which yeah. ba tai means wealth and yeah. so therefore you got a good good um meaning mental fortune behind it exactly so um all of um those things that really make it and also too they're round at least originally and um things that are yuan or round are also a, a symbol of unity and family unity and making things together so now, while Ming is making these with the store-bought ones, I have some other ones. I have made the jiaozi pea or the jiaozi skin from scratch. So this is plain flour and water. They've been mixed together to form a dough. <clears throat> and I've had them sitting for about half an hour. And that's really quite important to allow the gluten um, to relax and then it will enable it to stretch a little bit more. Did your grandma used to make her own jiaozi pea? Always. Always? Always. Um, it's all homemade, handmade. And when I was younger, um, studying in you know, primary school, so when I finish for the day, go back home, you can, when you just walk into the kitchen and you smell the cabbage, and all you can hear the noise of the chopping, <laughs> or either it's getting close, you know, get. Just getting dinner ready soon for the jiaozi. You knew there was a home to come from. Yeah. So you can see how lovely and elastic this is from having um, waited. And really all it is, is just flour and water. For people who want to make steamed ones, sometimes they use like a warm water, but cold water is otherwise fine. Now, if I was in a, a luxury restaurant like Din Tai Fong, when they make their dumplings, you probably know this, but they measure every single piece to make sure they're exactly the same weight. Have you ever seen them do, do that? I think uh, Sydney has a few uh, Jin Tai Fong uh, restaurants. So they get the glass window out there and each one's like doing uh, chemistry formulas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but I'm not at that standard. I'm the home cook standard, so um, I'm not going to... to way mine we're just having fun as a family and no one's going to complain hopefully if they're not the right side so you need a bit of flour on the board because they're still good you get a bit sticky does your grandma do it this way too yes the way how how i see most people do is from um from the center actually from the center out yeah. 
it does it's actually from the make center it. of the um, oh, from the center of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not from the hat. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. Center tip. <laughs> So there we That's go. That's more smoother. It's yeah. smoother and it's mm. much easier to be mm. round. Mm. I don't know why, it's just that method makes a huge difference, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a physics. It's a physics, she yeah. says. Okay. See, a lot of time is two hands. So one hand is working for a roller and the other hand is getting that. To out. move it around. To move around. So that's why you see people a lot smoother because you don't need to use the top end, so you're getting the, the nice beautiful. And the good thing about yeah. the handmade one is it's very elastic, isn't it? Mm. And so it's a lot more forgiving than the store bought ones. You can mm. spread it into different shapes. With the factory, do you want to have a go at making these ones? Let me try. <laughs> It's much softer. I'm getting my new technique sorted now. Yeah. So you, you don't need to stop every motion. You're right. You don't need mm. to stop. You just keep going. You just keep going. And the more often you do it, that's why they come like machine mode. Nice. And it actually does lead to a much smoother and finer result. Mm. See? <laughs> getting much better. So now we're going to eat the dumplings. So we've got a selection of them. We've got some with the homemade um, pea or the skin and some with the commercial one. And as my friend Ming was saying, the ones with the homemade is much better. It's much more elastic. She thinks there's a risk of ending up with dumpling soup from the others, so we'll wait and see. So I've boiled the water and now I'm just going to gently put these dumplings in. Ming's still making dumplings. She's come over for dinner and I put her to work cooking and put her to work being in this video. And the performance. And performing, <laughs> she says. And so there's a trick. Is when it goes onto the bowl, you put one cup of water, Chinese cup of water into them. And the reason you do this is that you don't want them to be on the boil all the time because if they are on the boil all the time, then they'll split open. So in traditional Chinese households, you do this three times. So you bring it to the boil again, put another cup of water in, another bowl of water in, bring it to the boil and then do it again. And then after three times, it will be ready to serve. So this is the second bowl of water. Now you can see that the dumplings are already starting to float. But it's really important because they contain pork that they're fully cooked because um, food poisoning from pork is not fun and we definitely don't want to go there. Third bowl. And it's starting to look really close. They are looking yummy and I can't wait to eat these. See how they're swollen up? They're lovely and big and fat and prosperous, which is the way you want dumplings to be. And you can see already, or maybe you can't see so much on the video, but the homemade dumpling um, skins are so much nicer. They really make a huge difference. And so they're ready to eat now. So we always eat them with a dipping sauce made with soy sauce. And into the soy sauce, you can customize it with chili, ginger, and garlic, depending on what you'd like. So now we get to eat the dumplings. We're making up a dipping sauce. So everyone has their own individualized dipping sauce with soy sauce, a bit of sesame oil, a bit of ginger, a bit of garlic. And some people like quite a lot of chili or not much chili at all. And um, then we go to tuck in and actually have some to eat. Do you want to go first, Neil? No, I want to make up the sauce. <laughs> you want for me, please? I think there's some soy sauce for you. Yeah. 
turns. What do you like? A bit of ginger. A little bit of chili. A bit of ginger. I'm going to have a bit of ginger as well. I like lots of ginger. Is this quite chilly or is it mildish? I think that's mildish. Usually I'd have fresh, but I happen to have that. I've got gifted it. Beautiful. So who's going to be the first to try some? I'll grab one. Pick it up. There you go. Snooze you lose. <laughs> they don't last long, do they? <laughs> Mm. Really lovely fresh dumplings. So different from what you get when you buy them frozen, isn't it? Just lovely. Say so goodbye. Thank you so much and see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a bit of attention, don't you? I've finished the message.